Hi guys, I made a koala and a wombat. Check it out. So first, I will show you a very, very, very fast video of how I made the koala in super hyperspeed. And then I will make a slower, more step-by-step -step video that you could theoretically follow along with, with some pressing the pause button and, and doing some felting on your own of this little wombat guy. Let's check out the felting. My other tripod broke, so I'm using this one and filming upside down, and it's all, it's all very confusing, but I feel like I can make it work. So I'm going to make a wombat. I have my upholstery foam and my felting needle. What I do in the middle is I use this mill waste, so it's like cheap. Maybe the mill was trying to make some yarn and these were the ends. The extra maybe was too short, but for whatever reason, this is a lot cheaper. And if you're gonna put it inside anyway, it doesn't matter if it's bluish, purplish, funky color. So I like to wrap it up nice and tight, and then give it some, some pokes to hold it all in. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's really just the inside, but I like to make sure that my inside parts are, I mean, they're at least tight enough to kind of hold the structure. So if it's too squishy on the inside, it's not going to matter what you do on the outside. It'll get all misshapen, squished. So, you know, wombats are kind of, they're just kind of an oval. So I'm making an oval. I think they're fluffier than this. We'll add, we'll add a couple more layers. There. So since I started out by rolling it nice and tight, it doesn't need a whole bunch of pokes to keep it together. So I can just grab some more. I also have purple. Wow. I'll do it little by little. I'm gonna make them a little fatter. A lot of felting is just stabbing, stabbing, stabbing the wool over and over. So I will definitely fast forward a little bit through this part. You don't need to see it all in real time. There. So this will be the body shape. Just kind of know, pill shaped, would you call that? Put that there, and we'll make a head, which is not huge on a wombat. They don't have big heads. Now, if I was gonna make it big and cartoony, it might not look like a wombat anymore, so I guess I'll try to make it smallish. Sort of, they're pretty square, actually, wombat heads. I've been looking at the pictures, of course, I cannot make one just from the inside of my mind. Well, it's kind of a nice shape. All right, not perfect, but something like that. Not, not bad. Let's turn it over and I'll do this part first. So I'm gonna poke it in, Keeping your needle nice and straight. You don't want to bend the needle or, or pull it out from a different direction that you shoved it in, because that will make your needle break. And that is not something that you want. There's nothing like a cute little fluffy toy with a razor sharp needle somewhere inside it. That's probably not what we're going for. All right, not bad on the bottom. I'll attach the neck. So I'll do it from this side. I'll start it attaching, and then I'll also do it from this side, body side. Still plenty of fluff to work with, I didn't make it too tight, but you know, firm enough to be a good foundation for everything we're putting on the outside. There. 
some stabbing. Okay, I mean, he doesn't look like much yet, but he will. Huh? Now, I call this putting the skin on because that's how I think about it. Here's the guts, here's the skin. So what I do is I you know, separate it, make it a little bit thinner. You can always put more more um, skin. Uh, it's gross, but that's how I think of it. Now here is where we do a lot of poking. More, even more poking. This is not, you don't want it to be really, really, really fluffy. Or I don't anyway. Some people make very fluffy needle felted creatures, items, dolls, whatever they're making. They're really, really, really poofy. I like to give them a little strength, and they don't get all fuzzy. All right, poke this into his tummy. That doesn't have to be perfect, because we will cover it with more. All right, fluff it out. I don't know if you can see this, but sometimes sheep are not, uh, they're not tidy, so sometimes there'll be little bits of grass in your wool. You just have to toss them to the side. I think it needs a little more here. Do be careful with your fingers because the needle is very, very sharp. That's one thing that makes it not a great idea to watch TV while you're doing it, but it does take forever and I just watch TV anyway. But if the show is too good, I definitely stab myself. I've done that. I can't even tell you how, how often. <laughs> All right. So now at least one layer of skin has gone on. This is a good time to check and see if there's no weird lumps or you know his body is tilting super funky way to one side or the other easier to fix it now than later once you have details that you actually like all right so that's his body mainly covered it's okay if there's a little bit of fluff i still need to add legs so that doesn't have to be perfect how about his little face i'm gonna start like back of his head, kinda. <laughs> there, done. Just kidding. Put the first layer kinda this way. Sort of following the contours of his chin and cheeks and stuff like that. He does have puffy, puffy cute little cheeks. Now he needs his face covered. Hold on, buddy! And, yeah, so you can see that his face is no longer square at all. That's okay. Still add a little more to cover the purple on his cheeks, and then we'll start shaping. Fluffy! Here's a tip. When you are not currently using your felting needle, stick it in your block of foam, because when these fall on the floor, they disappear. You can be two inches away from them, and they completely blend in. His face needs to be flatter and more of sort of this shape. Square in the jaws, too. Alright, so I'm poking sort of evenly on his face to make it flatter. I'll poke along sort of across this section. There. That's at least a flatter top, like he should have. Now I'll Flatten the sides a little, and then add some puffy cheeks. Now, here is his face. It's not, not quite as, as I don't know how to describe it, cheeky. They have, like, cheeks. So let's put on some puffy cheeks, and then we'll do his uh, muzzle area. I'll separate this into two, so I can do each cheek. See what it looks like with puffy cheeks. It might look silly. Might look silly in a good way. You never know. About like that. Oh yeah, I like that better. I'll show you a little. Hey, kind of see how this side's. Got a little more cheek. That's cute. It's cute, I like it. 
Now I have to try to do the same thing on the other side. Or similar. I'll go with similar. How about like that? Smooth it here. Smooth it. Smooth it out. Make it solid. That's better. That's better. So he does have kind of a muzzle that goes on, sticks out a little bit further than his cheeks. All right, this looks foolish, but I will see what I can do to smooth it out. I think, I think I'm not going to ruin the whole thing, but the nice thing about felt is you can always tear it off if you have to. All right, and I'll flatten this part out. Let's see, I'll show you in the meantime. Can you see him? He looks kind of funny. Now, this part is kind of sticking out. I'm going to try to squash it down. So it doesn't look like a weird elephant creature anymore. Alright, I like that. I like, I like the idea of it. I don't love this part, so I'm going to add a little bit to just smooth it out. Just to kind of cover up. It's kind of some dark fiber there, so it makes it look even more like like, uh, not like I want it. <laughs> ha! I'm pleased so far. Wasn't sure if I could get it to look wombat-ish. So, I'm gonna curve. See, there's already kind of a, a muzzle situation. I'm gonna curve it a little bit, because their eyes are not far out. They're a little more like here. I'm gonna curve this side a little too. Okay. So far, so I don't know. Wombat. He doesn't look that great on camera. In real life, he looks better. So hopefully, I can get some good pictures and show you what he really looks like. Um, ears. He needs ears. Yeah, I do. So his ears—they don't—they're not big. I'm gonna do sort of a triangly thing. If I can, I'll leave the bottom fluffy so that I can attach it. One. Try to do the same thing over here. Now, this looks like a terrible idea, but if you poke in very carefully and don't jam your needle like way out and way back in again, this is a this is an okay way to do the edges. All right, so that's his face. It's upside down for you. Sorry. How's that? Well, that's not bad. other ones so they are kind of even. That's him so far. Let's give him legs before we do his face just because I feel like he wants something to stand on. Okay, four legs. They're not going to be long so we don't need a ton. They don't need to be enormous. So Take two chunks, then split each chunk into two. This is how I tell if things are about the same size. I kind of crunch them into a ball. Let's see if one ball seems way bigger. All right, and now we'll make tiny legs. And leave the fluffy part out. Here, why don't you sit there? This is another thing, legs and arms, tails, ears, whatever. You, you want to crunch it up or roll it or make it in some way the shape that you want before you even start poking. So, you know, the tighter that you can roll it before you're poking, the less poking that you have to do. And so really anything to save yourself five minutes of stabbing, something that I recommend trying. <laughs> because if you start with just this and you're poking and poking, it's it's gonna be fluffy for so much longer, but this one is already a little bit solid. All right, so like I said, you know, you give it kind of a roll and some twists. Start somewhere similar to the other one. 
turn it every once in a while. Keep stabbing them in. I feel like you can't really see anything except for my fingers holding it together. May have to use your imagination. That foot looks significantly larger than that one. This is still fluffy, so we'll keep poking. Okay, so these are still not the same size. They got close, but not entirely or just right. Oh, that's closer. It's not perfect, but we can always pad, pad the smaller one. So I'll put it there, tack it down. And we try to make the other one about the same height so he doesn't stand crooked and work on the back legs. Good to start. You just relax right there. Now I'll try again to get two sections the same, twist it around, and then stab it together. And then I will try to make another one the same. And we compare. Okay, now we are ready to put some back legs on this wombat. Tack it on. Tack this one on. All right, let's see if it stands. Ooh, it does! Ha! Yes! Okay, so that means that my legs are in the right place and I can attach them. Okay, now they are attached, but you can see, you can kind of see the seams of where they, uh, they've been tacked in. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of fiber and then kind of blend that in over here. Okay, see that blends it in a little bit more. Put some here. Now, you can also look in here and if these little bits bother you, you can put more on there. I'll do that as well. More of a seamless leg. You add some more fiber in here. All right, so not perfect, but let's do the other side. Now we just go through and get rid of all this fluff. So just poke everywhere until it is as not fluffy as you want it to be. So here we are. I've defuzzed him. He just needs a face, and then he'll be so happy. Let's try to make him stand again. See, he can stand on here, but every time I try to make him stand here, he falls over. Oh! So he needs eyes, and I'll use black. He's got a big triangle nose. How about brown? That'll work. I'll make this my triangle. So here's the top. Ah, I can't do it down there. I'll do it here. Try to make this sort of flat, like another edge of the triangle. I don't know. To me, their noses look like big triangles. So that is not even. How's that? Better. Let's fix the top. I want it to be a little more wide. That's better. Okay, let me tack it down. That is it's where he's starting. Hello. Let's see what I can do to flatten this out a little bit. I'm not loving the way that it's weird. <laughs> you sit here. Look at the camera. Ow. I have this skinny, skinny roving. It's like super skinny pencil roving, which is handy if I'm trying to do little eyeballs. I'll take you know, that size and split it in half. Can always add more. Oh, time for eyes. I think we go here. That is not a bad place for the eyes. And in reality, that's probably how big they are, but I think I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and give them a little personality. So I think... Hello! I'm going to stop here. 
and be happy with him the way he is. He looks a little bit like a wombat. Chubby little wombat cheeks and some cute little ears. 